Goddamn, every YouTuber be like, Xinyan is OP. Then proceeds to clickbait with 4 7 with an unreasonable buff party composition, and unfortunately, this thumbnail as well. Hate to break it to you, but um, I'm here to say she's not as good as people claim her to be. In this video, I'll actually be explaining if Xinyan is worth your investment or not, and short answer after several testings, unfortunately, it's uh, she's not. Well, my answer is kind of skewed towards uh, free to play players. But if you're an Omega Whale with all the resources in the world, uh, my answer is still no. And let me explain why. Because her kit and constellations are so mixed up, uh, there's an infinite amount of ways to build Zen Yen, which highly depend on your constellations and what role you need her to fulfill. Because of this, um, you can't really take advantage of all her skills in one build. First of all, before I go into the builds, let's get some things straight. She needs defense to keep her shield up reliably and not pop in one hit. If her shield drops, say goodbye to all your buffs and the pyro DOT damage. Secondly, her energy recharge is abysmal since you'll be hitting uh, E or Q and then you swap out. So you kind of got to build around that if you want to utilize her Q. For example, um, putting Venti in the team, uh, doing a double pyro composition or a reaction based teams to generate energy. And thirdly, I'll be talking about Constellation 2 and up. Anything below C2 is really not worth investing in because um, C2, because C2 most notably gives her a max level shield. So you can effectively uh, EQE and kind of cycle that rotation and have her shield up almost all the time. Okay, let's get into her skills. First off is her basic attacks. Extremely clunky and the third hit is slow. Charge attack is normal, just like Razor is cool. So already in my head, I'm thinking she can't be a main DPS uh, just because her basics are pretty lame and she can't really be on the field all the time. Okay, cool. So her E, it does a really fast slash pyro damage that procs four particles and generates a shield based on her defense with, uh, with a 12 second duration and an 18 second cooldown. So the strongest shield which is a level 3 shield, provides pyro DOT damage constantly uh, for the duration of the shield. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, cool. Maybe build her with some energy recharge, uh, defense stats, and some elemental mastery uh, for continuous pyro reactions and keeping up her E shield all the time. And then we get into her Q, which completely throws me off guard. The initial and strongest hit of her Q does physical damage and then some small pyro damage afterwards. Like, that's super weird. Do I give her like physical bonus damage now? You know, it doesn't seem right giving, giving her physical damage because her basics are so bad and it would only boost her Q damage. So I can already tell there's a lot of YouTube videos on Zin Yen right now doing a two piece uh, physical damage bonus set, two piece gladiator or something like that to boost her Q damage. Um, that is definitely not the way to build her. And now we get into some of her skills, her talents actually. Um, her most notable talent is while under her E shield, she gains a, uh, anyone under that shield gains 15% physical bonus, uh, physical damage bonus. And then comes in the freaking constellation too. 100% crit on her Q physical damage and it gives a level three E shield. So as a big numbers guy as myself, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna just full send her physical crit damage DPS build. And thus, that is how that 66k in the beginning of the video was born. It's kind of underwhelming damage. And well, as it should be, because given the uh, low multiplier on her Q, it is kind of weak. Definitely not the way to go. So now I try a different build. I try to take advantage of her pyro damage um, DOT off of her E shield or off of her Q. And so I give her a pyro bonus cup and some EM with uh, your standard four piece witch set as a support unit. I bring in Kea to see the reactions and this is the result. On the cryo register fine. Yeah, not that good. He's doing around 500k procs. When it melts, it does 1000k proc. And I gain no energy back, which is um, just kind of sad. So, so kind of like pyro damage E shield build. 
also not the way to go in my opinion now lastly i really want to make her work so i try using her as a physical support to take advantage of her talent which gives 15 percent physical bonus under the shield and if you have a c4 constellation um, you get a debuff enemies get a debuff of physical damage 15 percent too so you could do that too um, so with this build you want to build her defensive so i'm thinking energy recharge um, defense percentage just to boost the shield power and get her q up as fast as possible so you can um, alternate using eqe for the shield spam and maybe use something like sacrificial weapon for the energy recharge maybe an e reset as well um white blind is kind of bad because you need to keep her on the field attacking so she can get the attack and defense percent boost so i wouldn't recommend going white blind um unfortunately i don't have the artifacts to showcase this build but we can theorize and we can already see some problems here so in order for her to recharge energy efficiently you need another pyro unit to generate some particles someone like bennett to begin the field um procking his e or you can get away with someone like venti uh, main dps can be whomever physical someone like razor but then you kind of need super conduct for the huge damage boost to your physical uh, main dps so maybe kea with his q and it's going to be kind of hard to reliably reliably proc super conduct all the time because um you're gonna get some pyro damage off of zinian's shield and honestly proccing super conduct by itself is already kind of overkill for physical dps so the shield is not really all that necessary you're gonna get some melt damage um with ks q or something maybe with uh, chi chi's uh, damage too but yeah 15 percent physical damage bonus um, just for the shield is really not worth it. I'd rather bring in a sub DPS or I can just bring in Bennett, which um, his Q gives me an attack bonus. Also, if you use uh, Zin Yan with Kea and Venti and all that st all those characters, swapping and activating skill is going to be super hectic and you're going to lose so much DPS time that's not even worth. Um, you can definitely do this for like uh e -peen showcases like if you want to attack a non-movable boss like the regis vine okay cool you can showcase that but in the abyss spiral it's completely different you're not going to have all the time in the world to set up your cues and e's like that also you're going to have like a lot of overload reactions which like hits the enemy like across your room um just losing more dps time is not worth so what's the best build or team composition for her you know i'm not gonna pretend i know everything but um but for me i think her best build would 100 percent uh, belong in a reaction focused team as a support so the reaction is going to generate energy for her and she is there for the shield whether it's for the physical bonus percent or a uh, the pyro dot damage um, so she definitely needs the defense stats to keep her shield up all the time. Can she do damage? Sure, she can with her Q. Um, but is it worth building her that way? No, not at all. You see my physical uh, build already. If you focus all of her stats on on DPS or damage, one hit from like a hurlatrill will like pop her shield and then boom, there goes like half her kit. Like, she's just there for a Q spam. I guess you can just use her for a Q spam. Um, but then you need energy to keep her Q up all the time. It's very anti-synergy. Um, her C2, 100% phase crit. Just pretend, it's, just pretend it isn't there. And uh, you'll be more focused on what she primarily needs or what, she need, uh, or what she's used for. So for me, stats to look for. Defense percentage, energy recharge, and then elemental mastery. If you want to focus on attack, um, a super anti-synergy, but yeah, I guess you can do that. You probably you probably need C6 to make her uh, damage viable. Maybe you have defense percentage, and then the C6 will give um, more attack. But then again, you need C6, which is um, kind of unreachable for most people. And even then, if you had C6, defense percentage would still be superior. Unfortunately... Um, she will not be in my Razor team composition. 
again, overload proc is definitely not what I'm looking for in a pure physical team. Um, and so, like, the shield is kind of useless for the pyro damage. It only gives 15% physical damage bonus, which is really small compared to a superconduct. So yeah, I will stick with my superconduct shatter razor team. So I'm using water, cryo, and electro. But I will be using Xinyan in my gene team, which is uh, which she's going to replace Yang Ling with. So it's going to be like a gene reaction team. You might have seen other videos of me doing abyss with it. I have Fischl, Mona, Gene, and now I'm going to have Xinyan in the team. It's going to be a lot of reactions, a lot of energy. It's going to be pretty nice. Stay tuned for future videos of that. But uh, that's all for me in the Xinyan video. If you learned something new or want to see some more Xinyan showcases in the future, leave a like and subscribe. But yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time.